Welcome to Live Today, Digital Edition. I'm Randy Robinson. I'm here with Johnny Baker. Uh, you might recognize the name, but you will probably recognize the program. Celebrate Recovery has been helping people all over the United States for many years now. And uh, my guest today is the pastor at Saddleback Church, Rick Warren's church, uh, over Celebrate Recovery. Good to have you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for you know coming out here in the middle of the U.S. to talk about what you guys are doing. Love it. Love it. Um, so let's start with the book, yeah. Road to Freedom. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of your story in here. Yeah. Celebrate Recovery is sort of uh, a sibling of mine, if you want to think about it that way. My parents started Celebrate Recovery in 1991. So the joke is that my oldest sister is Laura. I'm the middle child, and Celebrate Recovery is the baby and it, the favorite of our family. As a PK, <laughs> that is truer than most people would realize. Yeah. yeah. So I grew up in the program. Uh, they started it when I was about 15 years old, and now I get to work for the program after it changed my life and changed my family. So it's an exciting, exciting journey I've been on. So explain for people that don't know yeah. exactly what is Celebrate Recovery. Yeah. Celebrate Recovery is a Christ-centered recovery program for anybody struggling with a hurt, a hang-up, or a habit. And so basically that means all of us. The, the Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, which means we've all hurt people, we've all been hurt by other people. But some of the, sometimes that pain becomes a hang-up like codependency or judging people or you know getting hung up into uh, different compulsive behavior. And then it can turn into a, a habit, which is alcoholism, sex addiction, drug addiction, those kinds of things. Okay. That, so those it, things that we wish we could stop doing, we just can't stop. Okay, so this is not just a 12 step for the church, in a sense, this is this is broader and yeah. dealing with a lot more things. Yeah, about a third of the people who come to Celebrate Recovery come for a chemical addiction issue. The rest come for a, a whole wide variety of other mm -hmm. things. And why did you go? I came as a teenager because my parents made me. When they first started Celebrate Recovery, I was 15 years old and uh, was the leader of the teen group, which we should have just called Complain About Your Parents because that's all that we mm -hmm. really did. Mm -hmm. um, and then went through it as a child of an alcoholic. And then years later, after walking away from Celebrate Recovery, and walking away from the church and kind of going out and uh, becoming an alcoholic myself. I was arrested for a DUI in 1999, and uh, that wasn't enough to bring me back. It took about another four years until my wife got pregnant with our oldest daughter that I decided I needed to do something. I needed to change because I was, uh, I had become an alcoholic, but I was raised by an alcoholic, and I didn't want to bring that into my family, uh, mm -hmm. another generation. Yeah. Yep. And so I sought out Celebrate Recovery for to help with my addiction issues, and it's been 15 years. So the question that everybody wonders probably when they meet you, mm -hmm. and I'm curious if they actually ask, I'm going to. Yeah. If you grew up in Celebrate Recovery, didn't you know better? Yeah, yeah, I did know better. But I also thought that they just, the people that I knew, like my dad and others, just didn't know how to do it right. They lost control. And so I figured I would learn from that experience, but I'd still be able to do the things that I wanted to do. I'd still be able to drink and do the things that I thought a 21-year-old was supposed to do or a 22-year-old was supposed to do. I just kind of thought that those were things that, yeah, you know, yeah, I know the dangers and I know the pitfalls, but I'll, I'll be smarter than that. Mm -hmm. and, and really there was a moment when drinking stopped being fun and it started being medicine. Mm -hmm. it, it went from being a party with friends and being a solo thing that I did in, in my den with the lights off. And uh, it, well, what were you medicating? I was medicating pain. I mean, I think that's at, at the core of it all. Part of what we do in Celebrate Recovery is we dig down to that thing that causes us pain. So what brings us to recovery might be that we eat too much or we're not enough or that we're mm -hmm. drinking or we're doing something that we don't like. And if we just deal with that symptom, we're gonna find new things. Right. And so it wasn't until I dealt with the fact that I'm an, an anxious person at heart. I worry about everything all the time. Mm -hmm. And I really don't feel like I deserve to be loved. And those are things that took me a lot of years to kind of get to the heart of and a lot of work through recovery. But when I was able to experience the truth of those things and then bring God into it and say, okay, God, I don't even feel like I deserve your love. Mm -hmm. And so how does that work in my life? And how do I begin to experience that love? And then how do I learn to not worry about things all the time uh, and, and not be so anxious? And that's when then all of a sudden you can start seeing that you're finding freedom and healing from some of those things mm -hmm. that have been holding you back for so long. For the person who's struggling with whatever mm -hmm. it, it manifests itself as, because you're talking about core issues that can manifest themselves in many different right. ways. Right, but the problem of, of not feeling loved, of not feeling worthy, of anxiety, I mean, those are, those are broader things. Do you think those things can be properly dealt with outside of Christ? 
I don't. I don't. I think that we have to, uh, and I think that's one of the most powerful things, if not the most powerful thing about Celebrate Recovery is that it's it's in a, in and through and because of and for a relationship with Jesus. That's where we find the healing that we're looking for. And to deal with some of those core issues, I think that, I, I don't even think we have the power to go into some of those things if we don't have a relationship mm. with Jesus. But some people have successfully overcome them. Oh, sure. And they found freedom and there's great, you know, there there are great 12-step programs that have helped a lot of people for a lot of years. I'm not speaking against those right. things. Right, no, I know you're not. But I, I think to you're. really dig into those, the, the heart, the, that core issue, to understand who we are and where we fit, I, I just don't believe that we can do that. Forget recovery. I just think in a worldview, I think without Jesus at the center of that, we're always going to be struggling to find that place that we fit in. Mm-hmm. And to, to, to finally, one of the things that really for me was to finally come to the point where you know, Johnny, you, you actually don't deserve to be loved, and I love you anyway. Mm. You're, you're not gonna earn my love, mm. and you don't have to earn my love, and I choose to love you anyway. Mm-hmm. Now, I've got three kids, and they don't do anything to earn my love every right. day. They couldn't, right. you know? But I love them like crazy just because right. they're my kid. Right. And to finally go, okay, the God who went, you know, who spoke the universe into existence loves me in that way, right. That changes everything for yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. You found you you understood in, in a way that was outside of just being raised with the word. You understood grace. Yeah, and I think sometimes if you're raised in the church or you know things like that, I think right. sometimes those concepts can kind of get lost because oh, they yeah. become Sunday school sure, stories. Sure. But to have a personal, applicable experience where you walk through life and all of a sudden you go, oh, "Okay, I get it now." Yeah, that changes things. Yeah. So right. I think so. In the context of your question, yeah, I think I think that we need to have a relationship with Jesus to find that wholeness and to find that place that we belong. Mm-hmm. You know, for someone who's going, man, I want to know more about that. Yeah. How do they find out if there's one in their area yeah. or the things you got online? I mean, yeah. what's the best way to connect? Easiest way is to go to celebraterecovery.com and uh, right on there, there's a find a group tab. Okay. If you click on that, you can search by zip code and there's 30,000 churches that do Celebrate Recovery all over the world. Mm-hmm. There's probably one in the area, uh, you know, and uh, if not, there's another tab there find, called find your state rep and uh, he or she may know other volunteers that help people start Celebrate Recovery and get them going. How did this get so big? You know, I think this is the coolest thing. So my parents started this program in 1991 for basically our family and families like us. Mm -hmm. Like that was the whole scope (laughs) of what they wanted to do with Celebrate Recovery. And then slowly but surely, God has just grown it into this movement that has been amazing to watch. And I think part of it has been because they didn't mean for it to. Yeah. I think had they set out to do this big thing, yeah. I don't know that it would have reached <laughs> where it's gone, but just faithfully, every time God's asked them to step up into something new, they've done it. And now you know we've got this national team and yeah. these state reps and these conferences and this whole thing. But I think so much of it is based on their willingness just to step into what God had for them in that moment. And, uh, you know, now there's a lot of us who have come along whose lives have been changed by Celebrate Recovery who say, hey, I want to give back, which is part of recovery is that we give back to the program that helped us so much. Um, But it's it's been an amazing thing to watch for sure. Man, that's great. We appreciate you sharing your story. Check out uh, his book, the, F- the Road to Freedom. It's available right now, wherever you like to get books. And you can actually hear more from Johnny when he's on the Life Today broadcast program. Check that out at lifetoday.org. Thank you for watching and sharing this interview. Be sure to check out the social media for Life Today television, and you can connect with me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you haven't already subscribed or followed this channel, do it now so you can see more of our great guests.